Ashley and today's video is going to be a little different it's not a product review and it's not a start to finish this video is going to be a tips and tricks video um, I've had a lot of questions about how to do this or how to do that um, I've had a lot of questions about how to do a lot of stuff so I figured I will um, make a video to teach you how to do some of the things that I have figured out and some things that I have learned from you guys along the way. Okay, there is so much stuff around me that I have absolutely no idea where to start first. So, I will just start with the basic um, what you get in a kit every single time. Tools. There are quite a bit of different kinds of tools that you get. Um, with tweezers, Most of the time you will get these. However, you can get these ones as well. I use these ones all the time. Um, actually on circle drills, I use the pen, but then on square drills, I use only tweezers. I've worked with the pen quite a few times with square just to try to get used to it, but I can't navigate the diamond as well with the pen as I can with the tweezers so it's pretty much your preference on the tweezers but they're just used um, to place your diamond if your diamond moves or you need it to go another you know spot you can take it and move your diamond um, if a diamond falls somewhere that it's not supposed to be you can take it and pull it off so tweezers check with your pins there are so many different types of pins out there these are the three that I have um, this is the standard pen. You got where your glue goes, the open bottom. Um, then this one, same thing, only clear, and it's got a gripper. This is the pen that I use most just because of this gripper. And then I like the fact that it moves because usually instead of holding it down here, I'll hold it up here so I could get better handle on it. This pin I have not used. Um, I don't know. I guess since I just have the gripper one, <clears throat> I've never really tried. The end of this looks pretty deep, like it would take a lot of glue. Um, I'm not sure, but it definitely does look more um, deep than the regular pins. However, this one does have a built-in um, free diamond pickup, so that's really nice. With these pins, from what I've learned along the way, they have 
four extra things that you can do with them. Obviously, five technically. The first one is once you take your glue and your pen, you load your pen up with glue. Pull out a diamond. And place your diamond on the correct symbol for that color. Next, you have the three diamond pickup that you get with some of your kits. They just snap right there on the back. Again, you just Take your pen, take your glue, and put the glue in there. Spread it around nice and even. And then now you're ready to pick up your diamonds. I have not mastered the multiple pickup tool. Um, I've tried it a few times. I just can't seem to figure it out. It's definitely going to take more practice. So if you at home can't figure these things out, don't give up. Practice makes perfect. You also have a six one. This one's clear so it's kind of hard to see. But it holds six diamonds. And then you got... <clears throat> your nine. This one will hold nine diamonds at one time. So that is two, three, and four. The fifth thing that I have learned with these pens is when you lay your diamonds, sometimes they like to move. Um, if you like have the bottom done and then you lay your hand on it to do you know up more sometimes the pressure from your hand can move your diamonds if that happens and you don't want to use the tweezers or you don't have tweezers and just this you can take the end of this pin and gently move your diamonds because it's just big enough and small enough to where you can get around one diamond at a time and move it. Once you have your diamond in place, you can either take your hand and smash it or your fingers to get it nice and locked in there. Or you can do what the directions say and get put your paper back over, get a big book. Put a book on there, smash it. I've seen people use rolling pins. Um, people will get done with a painting and lay it flat, put it underneath their mattress for the night and sleep on it. Um, I've done that, it works out really well. Um, yeah, I think that is it for the pins with trays. These are the four that I have. I had just recently actually gotten a rectangle that does not have the tops of them. Um, it's packed up in storage for right now, but they do have that one as well. This one is the one that most come with. Um, it's just a standard tray. There's no opening at the top, so it is a little bit harder to pour your beads that you don't use back into your um, container. This one does have one where it opens 
um, which is really nice. I really like the openings. These two, however, are the ones that I always use because it's got the nice skinny piece so it's perfect for when I have to pour them in my containers when I'm done or when I get done with the project itself I have the small storage cases um, and these are really really perfect to pour in there they sell all of these by themselves on different websites um, I actually know of three websites that you can buy these tools. I will put the links down below. Um, yeah, and I think that is it on the tools. Next, I will start with containers. Um, these containers are the ones that I use. I seen them first, so I bought them, I used them, fell in love with them, so I'm sticking with them. I love these containers. They work so well. Is what I will do is when I first get my painting, I will go through and make sure all the colors are there. And once I've figured out all the colors are there, I will take a regular container that's not written on or anything. I will take just a regular black Sharpie permanent marker. Figure out what the colors are. This one is, first number is 152. But with how I label them, to figure out which painting is which this one is a blue fairy so I will either write B for blue or BF for blue fairy number one the number is 152 and the symbol is eight. And that's what it will look like once I am done and then I will put all of that diamond color in here. Now, once I am done with that color, I will get just regular rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. Take the Q-tips, dunk it in, shake off the excess, and clean it off. You do have to put a little bit of work into these just because it doesn't come off all at once. Mainly it comes off, but you do still have the little um, outlines from them. But all it takes is just a little bit of pressure, wiping it back and forth a few times and everything comes off perfect um and then it's just ready to be reused i love the fact that this works because if i could only use these one time i would have like a hundred thousand of these i really feel like i'd have that many and voila Everything is completely off, and it looks like a brand new jar. So, that is how I store my diamonds once I'm ready to do a painting. The next thing with these is static. I don't know about you, but it drives me mad when I open a bag of diamonds and they're 
falling everywhere because static is taking them wherever they want to go. So, to get rid of that problem, take your diamonds, take a dryer sheet, you cut off just a tiny bit, about that big, not anything huge, and then you just cut it into little tiny pieces. Once you're done, you put your lid back on, give it a little shake, and the static will be gone. Um, I always keep them, keep the dryer sheet in the containers for a little while. Um, I'll usually take them out, like if I pour some diamonds into the tray and the dryer sheet comes with it. I'll just take it out and throw it away. Um, or you can take them out the next time you're ready to use it. It's completely up to you, but this will get rid of the staticky beads. Um, let's see. All my other tools. I got this at the dollar store. Um, it has saved my life because all of the diamond paintings are in centimeters. So I wanted to know how big they were. So, say you're getting a 30 by 40 centimeter. You know that it's going to be this big by this big. And you can, you know, tell what size it's going to be, how much work it's going to be, and then when also when you are done with the painting and you're like, okay, time for framing, if you have a 30 by 40 painting, then you can look, flip it over to the inside, and know that you're going to need a 12 by 16 inch frame. Love this thing. It would be completely lost without it. Um, the next thing is the canvas. When you have a painting that has been rolled for a while, it likes to do this. And when you try to slay it flat, It's just going to roll up more. This one, I've messed with this one a little bit, but you can still see how it bumps up. Um, when I first started doing these, I would just lay them flat and then I would sleep on them. Put this under the mattress and then just sleep on it. But then I found out a way that I could get rid of that and work on it that very same hour. Very same 10 minutes, really. 5 minutes. You roll it the opposite way. Give it a good little squeeze everywhere. Not too hard. And voila. You have a perfectly flat painting. I have done this with a 50-60, um, I've done this with a 55 by 65, I've even done this with a 60-80. It works just the same. Okay, but some paintings like to come folded. And when they do come folded, they leave creases everywhere. And sometimes the creases can get so bad that it actually bunches your glue up. When you get 
paintings where the glue is bunched up sometimes the paint or the diamonds don't want to stick if they do stick they're kind of raised a little bit um, you can definitely get rid of it by putting some pressure onto the painting um, and once the whole painting's done you can't really tell but um, I'm sure that there are some that have been creased so bad that you it would be really clearly to tell so my trick that I've learned from one of you guys actually is to get a safety pin Let's get a small one and actually poke the glue um, and then take your tweezers and gently smooth it out. I've never done this before, so we're both going to do it for the first time together. And fingers crossed that it works. Okay, first I'm going to show you guys. You can see. But you can see the creasing right here is the one that I'm going to work on. It definitely does work. Um, it does not lay the glue perfect. Um, there is still a little bit of creasing, but it definitely makes a difference. They're not as big by far. Um, so, this is the one that we were working on right here. You can still see it. It is still there, but it does help with the bubble. Um, the bubble's not there anymore there's just a line from where the glue bunched up but I really feel like because the bubbles gone that the diamonds won't be raised as bad so that's good my next thing that I am going to show you guys with the canvas is when you have a painting and you are working on it this extra strip of glue that is away from the actual picture I don't know about you guys but every time that I go to lay my hand on it to work I'm constantly getting stuck on it so my second painting that I ever did I asked somebody and they were like put tape on it and I'm like oh my gosh like that is such a genius idea so simple but yet genius so I am going to show you guys how to do this you choose the tape that you want. Um, I just use the regular 
washi tape. Um, I get most of mine from Walmart, but I've gotten them from different craft stores, from Dollar Tree even. They all work. These two are from Dollar Tree. They work just the same. All of these, even the sparkly ones. Um, the sparkly ones that are a little bit thicker, they are a little bit more tough to pull up, but they still work. The same with these. The ones that are shiny and a bit thick, um, they're a little bit more, you gotta put a little bit more power into picking them up a little bit and you gotta be a bit more easy, but they do work. So if that's all you have, don't worry, they will work. This is glow in the dark tape and that even works just as well. The shiny stuff, all of it. And then it's how I found out about it being tough to pull up the thicker ones is I was using one of these and you can feel and tell that the tape is a little bit more tough but or thick but they do work um, you just gotta put a little bit more patience into pulling them up once you're done with your painting and ready to frame but you just take your tape, you lay it on the canvas. Um, if you're anything like me, this is going to take a little bit just because like I'm really picky about being right on the line because I want all of my diamonds to be absolutely straight on the canvas um, so I try really really hard to get all of the tape perfectly aligned with the line that it provides for you once you got your tape on there you just cut and done now some of the times you'll get this to where it's a little bit off the edges. Again, not to worry because it's only tape. You just turn it around and cut off what is extra. It's not going to mess the tape up. It's not going to make it come up. Um, you can see the tape, so you're not going to accidentally cut the canvas. And it all just works out very, very well. Um, the next thing, if you are one of the types of people like me and you want everything completely straight, um, you can take a ruler because you can't get any straighter than a ruler um, and lay it on top of the tape and then lay your diamonds right alongside the ruler I try to put the ruler on the sticky part without there being tape on it and when I went to go pull the ruler off, it took the tape or the glue with it. Um, thankfully, it did not mess with the diamonds that I had already laid. So, but it did take the tape off of the border. So I no longer put the ruler on the glue, only tape just because it didn't mess it up that first time doesn't mean it will or it won't a second time the next thing I want to show you guys is a light board you can buy these anywhere anywhere that you can buy a diamond painting you can buy a light board 
these things are so useful especially if you get a good one um, I didn't spend very much money on this one so it is a little cheap but it still works just the way that I need it to um, if you can't see the little symbols you just turn it on you lay it on there and it works just like a charm everything let me try it since it's so sunny outside it just shows right through not sure if there's really much of a difference um, but you get to see everything so much more clear there's also a light with a magnifying glass um, I don't have one of those but I've heard that it works really really well um, so yeah, if you're having problems seeing the symbols or if you have a painting that's really tough, got a lot of P's or B's, um, I know I've gotten mixed up with 6 and 3 and some 8. Um, 3 and 8 is a really difficult one for me. I'm constantly getting or having to look to make sure I got those right. Um, but the light board makes it so much easier to do. Um, the next thing is if you have a lot of diamond paintings, like I have, I'm going on my 34th diamond painting. I got this, it's just a regular binder. I went and got these um, paper hold things that you just slide your paper right in and it will be protected. But I keep all of my papers um, in here just because I feel like when your painting comes with papers it makes it a lot easier because you can just look at your paper instead of trying to rearrange your painting every time you turn around, especially if it's a really big one. Um, so, yeah. I absolutely love this binder. I use it every single day. Even if I don't need it, I will figure out a way to get this out for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I love it, so... And I think that is it. Um, if any of you guys have any questions about anything, please do not hesitate. Comment below. Ask away. Um, if there's any other videos that you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments. And I will make that video for you. Um... My normal videos are product reviews, so if there's any store that you want to check out, but you're not quite sure about me, um, let me know, and I will buy a painting from that store and check it out for you. Um, yeah, I think that is it. As always, you guys are absolutely amazing. My true diamonds in the sky. And I'm so happy to make this video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I will see you guys this weekend. As always, you guys are absolutely wonderful. Thanks for watching and subscribing and liking. Have a nice week, you guys. Bye.